Hey, what's up guys? John here. There's a loophole in the eviction moratorium right now that's allowing tenants to make over $100,000 a year off of your property without paying you a single dime in rent. So if you own a house or you own an apartment building or you are dealing with tenants at all, you need to be aware of your rights or lack thereof because what's happening now is really a shame for property owners. There's a story that I'm gonna cover in this video about a young couple that came over from India, they bought a property and they got caught in this trap. The tenant got rich off of their property. They're losing their only home in foreclosure. They have two young boys and they're losing everything. So be cautious, be aware of what's happening and understand everything, all the policies, because when you sign that lease with your tenant, you're taking all the responsibility and the city, the state, big brother, they don't care about what happens to you. So I'm gonna cover this in this video. Please smash this like button. It does so much for this channel and it really exposes the content, allows more people to become aware of what's really happening. So please hit that like button, let's begin. This young couple right here with their two children, after five years of searching, Avinash, Ja, and Ami Shah say they found their dream home in Fremont, California, already locked in a rental lease, they couldn't move in with their two children right away, so they decided to rent it out for a year to a family that they met online. So they found their dream home, they're in a lease, they decided to rent out their property for a year, thinking that they can move in at the end of the year. And some of you may be thinking, oh, maybe it's just an eviction moratorium, they're not paying and they can't get them out. No, it's a lot deeper than that, it's a lot darker than that. And unfortunately, this is this new loophole where tenants are just able to make a ridiculous amount of money off of their home. And you know, tenants right now are so desperate, they need to make money, not all of them, but many of them. You know, one in five tenants are not paying rent. So you start looking at those numbers, it's a pretty scary statistic. They're a family like us. They're trying to build a life here, we thought. Oh great, they'll take care of our home. The couple and their new tenant signed a rental agreement in August 2019 with strictly prohibited sub-leasing, meaning where you lease out a property and you could find another tenant to take your lease, either the whole property or a certain part of the property. Little did they know the tenants would disregard the agreement and turn their home, their dream home, into a hotel. In June 2020, neighbors alerted them multiple Airbnb listings advertising individual rooms inside of the house. I read through the reviews that even during the pandemic, about 200 different guests stayed there. During the pandemic, 200 guests. I was furious. All they wanted to do was make money off of our house, said the wife, which raises the question, does Airbnb check if the person creating the listing owns or manages the property? The investigative unit went through the Airbnb's property listing process three times using an address of an apartment that is not authorized for subleasing. Not once did Airbnb ask for proof of ownership or authorization through the site or the app. Now we have to ask ourselves. During this time where people are losing their jobs, people are desperate. Imagine if you were a, you know, say you're a husband, you have a wife, you have children, you lost your job, you don't have any way to pay your rent, what are you gonna do? Well, many would consider something like this, especially if they can drum up two, $300 additional income, maybe more per day in just cash flow. And if they're not paying rent to the landlord, all that goes straight to their pocket, so they're allowed to provide for their family. So this is gonna become a real big problem. And Airbnb declined NBC Bay Area's repeated request for an interview and said in a statement, these issues are rare, but we take them very seriously. The company tells listeners by clicking next, you certify that you've registered, that all necessary rights list your space. The JAW said the lack of through vetting by Airbnb led to the homeowner tenant Airbnb nightmare that flipped their family's life upside down. After learning their tenants violated the rental agreement by subletting their home, the JAWS served them with a 30-day notice to vacate September 24th, 2020. After weeks of back and forth, the couple learned their situation was about to get a lot more complicated. The JAWS family said when their tenant tried to get the Airbnb guest to leave, the guest refused, saying that they're now legally tenants because they've been there for more than 30 days. They also cited Alameda County's moratorium on evictions, said the JAWS. 
And their moratorium, we have the CDC moratorium, which is a national moratorium, which says that basically landlords can't kick the tenant out for not paying rent. It's a real problem. NBC Bay Area reached out to both the original tenants and three of the Airbnb guests. The tenants did not want to speak with us and the Airbnb guests did not agree to an interview. The original tenants have since abandoned the situation according to the Jaws, leaving them stuck in the housing dispute with the Airbnb guests who they do not know. Airbnb said they took down the unauthorized listing and suspended one of the Airbnb guest accounts in August. Legally, the Airbnb guest very well might be right. Legally, there's nothing the landlord can do about this, said Alan Horowitz, a landlord attorney who is not representing the Jaws or associated with this case. Horowitz said the Fremont case is not an isolated incident and said these kind of situations are happening all over the Bay Area. And because of Alameda County's eviction moratorium, Horowitz said they can't resolve the situation in court. I don't know how many calls I get each week where I have to tell people I'm completely helpless and I can't do anything for you right now. The JAWS reached out to the state and they've also reached out to the Board of Supervisors and haven't received any meaningful help. Until the end of the year and likely longer, they said they're forced to absorb the cost and the losses that have more than taken a financial toll. I'm just emotional that this has turned out to be such a nightmare said Amir Shah. So you think about this, you work your entire life, you save up a down payment, you buy a property, and the system is designed not to help support commerce. This is a real tragedy, and it's gonna be a very, unfortunately, it's gonna be a very common lesson that landlords are gonna be learning over this duration of the eviction moratorium. So the problem with this type of situation is that first and foremost, Airbnb, VRBO, all these third-party websites are nothing except third-party brokers who get a small fee for brokering the transaction. They're not going to do all the due diligence for every single property and verify every single homeowner and property manager to be sure that everything is on the up and up. They just want their fee. They want to be in and they want to be out. And the other thing is that you just really don't know today with tenants. One of my worst tenants that I've ever had was with, it was a doctor and it was in a very rough part of New Jersey. And unfortunately, this doctor was making a lot of money, but just didn't want to pay, unfortunately for me. And it was a very small amount of rent, and they just drug me through the mud over it, just because it was their personality. They interviewed very, very well, and you wouldn't really think so much. It's a doctor. It's an educated professional. They probably don't want to deal with landlord issues. They're just going to pay rent on time. It's not the case. They had great credit. They had great just savings. They were a well-qualified, on-paper tenant. And unfortunately, it just wasn't the case. So you just don't know who you're dealing with until you get that tenant inside of your property. You develop that relationship and that rapport, and then you'll understand exactly what you bought when selecting that tenant. So especially now with the eviction moratorium, we have to be extra careful and really make sure everything's on the up and up before we commit to any type of tenant. What are your thoughts on this? I personally think that this is going to become more widespread by the day. I think this is going to be a really big problem, and I think that big brother their way of preventing homelessness as they say and uh, making housing more affordable is ultimately going to hurt many landlords that are renting their properties so if you own a property you're thinking about renting out a property be cautious be weary of how the laws are structured because the last thing you want to do is end up in a situation like this poor couple from india when they come over and put their whole life's work into owning one property and now they're gonna lose that property in foreclosure, all thanks to selecting the wrong tenant. So be smart, be cautious, and be very aware of how everything is working right now. I myself, personally think we're gonna be stepping into a very big recession. One in five renters are not paying rent. One in five. 2.8 million homes in forbearance. We look at how the lumber costs have increased 180%, which is a fifth of construction costs in the last 14 months. 
How does that make sense when lumber costs are skyrocketing, wages are falling and people don't have to pay rent, and then home prices are at record highs and people think that that's a good thing and we should run out there and buy real estate right now. I personally think that smart investors are on the sidelines right now. They're watching, learning, studying, and getting ready to take advantage of big opportunities to come. Please smash that like button, drop your comments below. Very curious as to what you think about all this. And consider subscribing for more content on personal finance, real estate, business, money, and really just the economy as a whole. See you guys in the next video.